Hey y'all, wanna welcome you to our midweek study on Philippians. When we begin to play this, you're gonna notice that things look different. I've grown a beard, different things have changed, but what's not changed is the truth of God's word. When we captured this, it was the right time to capture it. We've not used it anywhere, but now's the right time to use it. So I wanna invite you to sit back, relax, take in what the Apostle Paul has to say in the Church of Philippi, and learn what God has for you in this study. Well, hey, y'all, and welcome to, back to our, our study, our look into the book of Philippians. Again, a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Philippi. And, um, and so we've got a resource here for you if you'd like to pick it up. You might say, well, we're seven lessons in. Why would I get the resource now? Well, look, you can either read this as a daily devotional, uh, one day, once a day, five days a week over a four-week period, and you go all the way through the book of Philippians and get some commentary on it. Or you could just read it from beginning to end. Either way, it's great background to what we're teaching here because I can do a little more in depth here than I do in here. So today we're in chapter two and we're toward the end of chapter two, but we're shifting gears. You, you see, as I told you when we began, really finding joy in life is, I believe we can find a pattern inside Philippians for finding joy in life, which is, why am I here? Finding purpose in life. We talked about that for a few weeks. Then we went to how do I think? I've got to shift the way I think. Once I determine why I'm here, I've got to shift the way I think to match up with my purpose, why I'm here. When all of that happens, then what, what, what takes place is I begin to change. Watch this. I begin to change internally. I begin to become what I have decided I am, what I've called for, what I have decided, what, how I have decided to think. When I decide my purpose and I decide how to think about that purpose, it literally starts to change who I am internally. And now we're into the idea of what I become what I am becoming in my life. I want to show you this. This is, this is chapter 2, verse 12, and I, I want you to hear this. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. Watch this. Here's words. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Continue, he says, to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. There are those within the church community, especially the American church community, that really struggle with this phrase. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling for them. Salvation is simply a matter of praying the right prayer and saying the right words with the right spirit, and then boom, it's done. You're good to go. You're going to heaven. Don't matter. You're, you're, from here forward, your actions have no bearing on your salvation. That is not what the Apostle Paul is saying right here. The Apostle Paul is saying, continue to work out your salvation. That No, no, everybody, everybody stay with me. I'm not saying that God's looking to knock you off the horse of salvation. I'm not saying that God's in heaven with a lightning bolt looking to strike you down because you did something wrong. What I am saying is that prayer to receive Jesus as your Savior is not an ending point. It's a starting point. Once we've received Jesus as our Savior and He has washed us clean, we must now do the work of becoming what He saved us to be. We must do the work of becoming something new, a new creation in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. We've got to do that work, but it requires work. It requires that we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, not fear that God will throw us away, not trembling because we're afraid we'll mess up, but fear and trembling, for it is God who is working in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his great purpose. I, I, I think what we need to understand here is we have a salvation that works. It works. It's always working within us. Our salvation is never just stagnant inside of who we are. Our salvation is never just leaving us. Our salvation works, and it works within us constantly over and over, at day after day, week after week, month after month. Our salvation is working to make us who God intends for us to be. We have a salvation that is working inside of us, and you got to let that salvation work. Listen, Sometimes when we get this I've arrived opinion, we become so heavenly minded 
we end up being no earthly good. And we've got to be so careful about that because God's constantly working on us. God's constantly changing us. Our salvation is working out inside of us. He continues, verse 14. Do everything. Remember, we talked about a salvation that works. It's changing you. But now watch. As it changes you, watch, how, watch what he says about how you're going to deal with people around you. Verse 14. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Can I just pause? Do everything without grumbling or arguing. Do not elbow your neighbor and do not say anything out loud right now. But how many of y'all struggling with grumbling and arguing about everything going on around you? Let me, let, let me tell you, in our culture right now, we seem to, we, y'all, we seem to major on grumbling and arguing. We're looking for something to grumble about. We're look, we seem to be looking for something to argue about. We make up stuff to argue about. We make up stuff online to yell at each other about that makes no sense. We make up stuff, you know what, I gotta be honest. We have come to the point now, it's shifted us, that we're starting to make up stuff in person, face to face to argue about because we've become so accustomed to it online when we can't see people. Listen to me, this is not good. The Bible says if you are going to become like Christ, if you're going to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, you need to do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Does that sound familiar? Yes, that's where we are. Our generation is messed up. I'm not saying they're bad people. That's not what I'm saying. God loves everybody that lives in our culture right now. But our culture and its thinking, our culture and its acting, our culture and its doing is warped and crooked. And we've got to act differently from that. We've got to become something else. Watch. If we do, listen to what he says, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Come on now. That's what the world needs. The world does not need another superstar on their TV. They need somebody beside of them that is shining like a star with the goodness and the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. That's what they need to see. We shine like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I'm being poured out, look look at Paul, even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice, what he's saying is even if I'm going to die here, if I die in this captivity, then, then, then on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. In fact, what he's saying is your witness in the world is so powerful that if these are my last days, I'm good. I'm good. You know why? Because I know you are there. I am glad and rejoice with you, so you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Listen, the truth is we need a salvation that works, and we need a salvation that is workable. That Both of these We need a salvation that changes us, but we also need a salvation that can work in the world around us, that that does everything without grumbling or arguing, that will go out and shine like stars in a warped and crooked generation. We We need a salvation that is workable in the world around us. When we have that, we can make such an impact on the world. We can, we can change things. We can come to the place that we're willing to say, you know what? If this is the last day I have on earth, I'm good because I know we're making a difference in a warped and crooked generation. Come on now. We need a salvation that works. We need a salvation that is workable. And I'll give you the third one. Let me just give it to you. We need a salvation that is working. Now watch. We're going to read a lot of verses, but I want you to see this because you probably just breeze over this if you read it. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you too. Remember, when we first started preaching this, Timothy is with Paul. So I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. There's no Facebook, there's no texting, there's no cell phone. Timothy needs to go get the information and then come back to Paul and tell him what's going on. So that's what Paul is hoping for. I have no one else like Timothy who will show genuine concern for your welfare, for everyone looks out for their own interests, not for those of Jesus Christ, but you, y'all, y'all, oh my, come on. Unfortunately, that's too often a description of the church. 
but it's certainly a description of the world around us. Everyone looks out for their own interests and not for those of Jesus Christ. But verse 22, watch this. This is how his salvation is working. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because he, he, because as a son with his father, he has served me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. You see, he wants to send Timothy to get word, but he's also confident that God's going to let him out of this situation, and he's personally going to show up with the Philippians because he knows what they're doing. We need a salvation that is working constantly at work. Now watch, he goes on. But I think it's necessary for to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker, and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger whom you sent to take care of my needs. So Epaphroditus has been sent by the people in Philippi to help the Apostle Paul to serve alongside him, and Epaphroditus has served faithfully faithfully alongside the Apostle Paul. He has a faith that is working. So indeed, he, sa he says, for he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard that he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him and not only, only on him, but also on me to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Now I'm not, now I don't have to be imprisoned and lose a friend and fellow co-worker. God has allowed grace for both of us. Therefore, I'm all the more eager to send him so that when you see him again, you may be glad and I may have less anxiety. So then, welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor people like him because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. Do you see this? He's got a faith. He's got a salvation that is working. Watch. If we do not understand the Apostle Paul's call to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, we'll have a faith that is static because it's received, but it's not doing anything. We instead need a faith that works. If we have a faith that is static and we think we're good, but everybody else is the problem, we're going to grumble and we're going to argue and we're not going to shine like stars. We need a faith that is workable in the world around us and not just calling people names and calling people out. We need a faith that is working, constantly moving, constantly changing. Listen, if we are not people actively working to build and share our faith, we will become people who are so inwardly focused, we are no outwardly good. And that kind of salvation just doesn't even work.